Hi, I'm Ken Endelman. I'm the CEO for Balanced Body. I'm here today to show you the Balanced Body factory here in Sacramento. People ask us the question, where do we make this stuff? The answer to the question is, is we make it here in Sacramento. But today I'm going to show you how we do it, take you inside, and kind of give you the whole lowdown on how we make things at Balanced Body. So let's start. So I'd like to start talking about our expansion and kind of what we did in the last three years to kind of show how Balanced Body's grown. So up until about three years ago, we were just um, this part of the building right here. And uh, this part, uh, which was about 25,000 square feet or 2,500 square meters, um, was leased out. So we were able to take over this space here um, and then build a wall from here to here. So between, and then cover this up. So we covered this up, that added about 9,000 square feet. This was 25,000 square feet. And then we covered the whole thing with solar panels. So here we have 1,000 solar panels. Now we have an additional 1,128 solar panels. So we have 2,228 solar panels. And so it's about a 1.1 megawatt uh, power plant that's up on the roof right here. So this enables us to function um, on warm sunny days like this. Almost we're, we're generating just about all of our power at this point. So I, like, um, I really like when I'm bringing people through Balanced Body to kind of show them this wall. It gives them a kind of a feeling for you know who we have working here, and and just how many people. So you know currently when we're doing this video right now we have about 260, 270 people here at Balanced Body. Um, all but just a few of them actually live in Sacramento and work here at the plant. We uh, um, we're really kind of proud. We've got people from all over the world here working at Balanced Body, all living here in the U.S. So let's go walk down this road, and then we'll start basically at the first steps here where the mature product comes in and where we start to do our first assembly procedures. We're about to go into the wood shop. Um, this is probably the first step for most of our products because most of our stuff is made out of, our, a lot of our forms are made out of wood and so we have to start in the shop here. So I'm standing in front of one of our CNC routers. We have three of these guys. Um, most of the panels that come in here are cut out on these CNC's. I used to do this whole operation myself. Uh, when I first started, I used to use templates and patterns and stuff. This is actually a great job, and it's so much more efficient, and it's so much more precise. So almost every panel that comes in here starts in the CNC area, and you can see that we have three of these machines all over the shop. I'm in the area here where we actually choose the wood that we're going to make the reformers out of. Then we place each piece of wood into like a family of wood or family of, of, of boards to make an entire frame. And what we do is we match the wood for every single frame. So we make sure that the sides look like the ends and they look like the legs. And one of the things that we're really careful about here, when we fabricate these boards, we make sure that we take the grains and we mix up the grain so that it goes in the different directions. So every one of our boards is made out of four solid pieces, and the different grains actually make the board stronger. It's kind of how they build the mast on the ship. And so every one comes out like this, um, and every one's strong, and it makes them also very flat. The next step is, is that now they glue the frames together, and this is the same operation that we do, or how we, we glue them together that I've been doing for 40 years. We haven't changed it. There's ways that we could do it that might be a little bit cheaper, but this way we really know, and this is why we can give our frames that long lifetime guarantee that we actually give them. After the frames are glued and they're dialed together, the next thing that we do is we actually fit the legs one by one individually on each frame. The idea is just to glue the legs on in such a way that the glue line, the lamination line, totally disappears, and that makes it as strong as the whole rest of the reformer. After that, we sand them, and do kind of a rough sanding on each reformer. So most of the work is done by hand on the reformers, but some of the most boring, the most boring and um, repetitive equipment, we actually, can, we actually have had the opportunity to automate, and this keeps our employees healthier and also a lot happier. How's it going? So behind me is our, is our newest addition, this is our robot. Um, our robot does the boring, the repetitive stuff that our, our sanders don't like doing. 
saves a lot of time. He does the general stuff, um, and then we actually do our, our actually send it to all the finish and the high quality stuff by hand. These are piles and piles of exo chair frames ready to be assembled and then sanded and then finished and then with the holes you put on there and into the box. But they all start here and this is all work that's done by the CNC. So this is one of the toughest, toughest jobs in the company here. This is our sanding area here. So almost every single piece of wood gets sanded. And the sanding is a really important indicator of the quality of the piece of wood and the product that goes out of balanced body. So these guys are really hard working. Um, they actually get paid a premium to work here. And, and I'm really proud of the work that they do. So it's too bad this is a video. Um, so you can't really feel what these frames feel like. But this frame has been routed and sanded by hand sanders. The robot probably touched this too. Um, now it's gonna get painted. What happens is everything gets at least two coats of paint, sometimes three. What will happen is they'll put the first coat on there and it makes the uh, grain on the wood stand up and it also kind of crystallizes the grain so that when you come by and do a fine sanding, it takes all those fibers off and it makes it super, super smooth. And so the first coat actually makes it rougher. The second coat is what really lays it down and makes everything smooth and very chemical resistant. These are wall units, and you can tell this has been one coat, but now it's getting ready for the second coat. We have a really good system here um, for quality control. If, if, if the part comes from like the wood shop to the, the finish area, if it's not done well enough, they can just send it back and get it redone. And so usually what happens is if something needs to be sent back, they put a piece of blue tape on it, um, then it gets touched up and then it comes back this way again. So you probably can't feel this right now, but you can kind of tell we went from the wood shop, which is really noisy. And then we walk out here and it's quieter because there's not as many machines out here. But also, it's really kind of interesting how we set up the shop. We set it up so that the wood shop, which has this you know, giant 50 horsepower, you know, 62 foot exhaust system, it sucks all the air out of the warehouse, which is cool, clean air, into the wood shop, through the wood shop, through the machines, grabs all the sawdust, takes it outside where it gets recycled. Um, and that's how we keep the air moving. So right now, I can actually feel the air moving past me into the wood shop because it's being sucked out for us. So here we have two stations here, um, and these are CNC, or computer numerically controlled uh, vinyl cutters or fabric cutters, and so they can cut anything. And we use these for cutting all kinds of things. Um, here you're looking at um, the top of an A2 carriage that was cut out. What happens is, is that the fabric is, gets unrolled here, then it's held down to the table with the vacuum, and then this head goes back and forth and up and down over the whole table and cuts out these patterns. And actually also optimizes the patterns as well. And so, um, so we can get the most amount of, of parts out of each sheet of vinyl. Instead of having to lift rolls and unrolling the, the, the rolls of vinyl onto the upholstery cutter, he just has this giant carousel and just goes up and down. So basically we've got these rolls of vinyl, they weigh probably 65 pounds. If he, if he has to lift it all day long, it's, 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 it can cause an injury. So this just makes it really easy. We're walking through the upholstery area here and almost everything that Balanced Body builds gets upholstered. And so it's really important that we're able to do a really good job of this. And so when we created our upholstery area, we built this structure above. And the cool thing about the structure is it enables us to bring the light down, any accessories that we need to bring down closer to the employees where they're doing the work. But above we can have the heat and we can have the fans. The cool thing about this is, is that during the winter time, it makes it warmer here. And so we're able to, with the extra warmth, we actually make it easier to work with the materials. And it makes it easier for our employees as well. Um, so the guys that are working with the vinyl, it makes it nice because they can have an even temperature. And the people in the sewing area, because they're sitting in one area, they're either too hot or too cold unless they've got air or heat over them. So now they all have that, which makes their lives really easy. Typically how it works is that we have to start with the wood form 
Then we've got to attach the foam to that wood farm. And then, and then we need to put the fabric onto the wood, wood farm. And that's kind of where the art is because that's got to be done perfectly and flawlessly. So this is our upholstery team here. They've got the fabric, it's already been cut, it's been sewn, it's, it's ready to be put on. Um, they all work on these high-low tables so they can raise and lower stuff and it makes it really easy and it prevents repetitive injuries. Um, and it helps them do a better job because they can lower the stuff for big, lower the table for big stuff, they can raise the table for little stuff, and they can change it all day long so they're not always working at the same length all the time. Looking in this area right here, so what we've done is, um, is we create different areas, they're called cells, and the cells actually put together products. And behind me is the cell where we put together our combination chairs, our exo chairs, and our wonder chairs, and our, um, all of our controllology stuff. And so we're right now at the point where they're starting to actually box the stuff right now. They'll box it. When these things are actually boxed and put in, in there, then they're gonna call for a fork if they'll pick the stuff up and then they'll go into our warehouse. So, so most people that have factories, they talk about the number of people, the number of machines they generate. We look at the size of our company by how many microwaves we have. Let's take a look. Here we are, Microwave City, right? You can cook, bake, wine, whatever you want to do in a microwave, you can do it at Bell's Body. This is our, and this is our break room here, of course. And this is just brand new, we just put this one in. Um, and uh, it just makes it a little bit nicer. And you can kind of see what we did here is, we added extra skylights in here, and we made it extra comfortable, and it's air conditioned. It's a good place for people to be when they want to relax. So training is really important. So not only do we do our, our training for BB education here, but we also do training for first aid, for CPR, we do diversity training here, um, and then we do a lot of on-the-job training in, as well in this classroom. And so that's why we, we built it. Um, and we have you know, our bigger meetings also in this room too. It'll seat 40 people. We have full AV here as well. Um, and it's also quiet from the shop. This is the area where we put together our Cadillacs and our, and our, our trap tables and, and things. Um, and, and one of the things that we do is, if you look over here, we've got a kind of a mock-up miniature Cadillac and then we actually put together, we pre-fit together the trap table canopies before we actually put them in a box to make sure that everything works. So people ask us, you know, how come we can kind of turn things so fast when other manufacturers can't do it? Um, if you look behind me, you'll see that we have trap or, sorry, ladder barrel bases on the shelf ready to go. We have the frames on the shelf ready to go. So all you have to do is put this stuff together. And what we do is we have as much stuff ready to go um, so that when we get the order, all we need to do is to put it together. And so we don't have to do, we don't have to work on something for 10 or 20 or 30 hours. All we have to do is just to do the final assembly part. So we're looking right now at the place where we do the final assembly for our wooden reformers. Um, and again, as you can kind of see behind me, there's wooden reformers ready to be assembled. These reformers haven't been sold yet, but we're getting them ready so that when we do get the orders, we can put everything together. Um, and so it's really kind of a simple operation. We have as much stuff on the shelf ready to go as we possibly can so that when we do get the order, we can have it ready to go fast. So we're out here in the back of Balanced Body and we're here to talk about trash and recycling. So what's really important for Balanced Body is to minimize the amount of material that goes into landfill and to reuse as much, as much stuff as we possibly can. So at Balanced Body we actually have like five different dumpsters or five different places where trash is put into. The first one is over here underneath the exhaust system, that's for sawdust. The sawdust gets recycled, okay, first thing all this stuff gets sucked out of the shop. It goes to that giant vacuum system there. It ends up inside that house. There's a big dumpster in there. It just fills up with sawdust. The second place is this next dumpster. This is for the scrap wood. The scrap wood gets just chewed up, gets turned into fertilizer, whatever kind of product that they can use it for. Um, that's where the scrap wood goes. The third dumpster is the one that goes, this is for a cardboard. We have a lot of cardboard comes in. All the cardboard gets recycled 100%. The fourth dumpster over there is for landfill. 
we try and minimize how much goes in as we possibly can. It's only a small percentage of our waste. And then the last one is for recycling. And we're trying to recycle plastics and aluminum as much as we possibly can. So between the recycling, between the solar energy that we use here, between our installation, between our skylights, we do our best to minimize our carbon footprint. So we're now into the A2 area. Um, this is where we do, we put together all the A2s. Um, so it looks like right now everybody's on break, which is kind of good because it's quieter here. Um, one thing that we do do is that some of these parts that come in from suppliers, we, they come packaged like this, and we use all this packaging over and over again. So when, that, when these come in, they're on pallets, then we'll use them. We'll send these, these, foam, uh, these foam cores back into a big box, and they'll go from here back to our supplier, um, and then they'll just reuse them over and over again until they, they're virtually unusable. But this way we can get you know, 30 or 40 uses out of them and before we have to throw them away. And that really helps out things a lot. Um, this is, these are cardboard inserts that get, gets used for packaging the A1s and the A2s. This used to be foam, and now we've gotten almost completely away from foam. In fact, for our reformer packaging, uh, we're not using any more foam, and we're using just cardboard. And so all this cardboard is totally recyclable. Um, in fact, this stuff is probably made from recycled material. This is probably 60 to 80% recycled content that's inside this board right here. So these are just kind of inserts that get used and they're put into the reformer print boxes to protect the reformer so that when you get it, everything's in one piece. So we're looking at one of our rows in our warehouse right now and you can kind of see how much inventory we have here. And uh, some of this product is ready to be shipped. Most of it's been ordered. Most of this is gonna go to customers. Um, we're still at a point for our business, you know, we, we have some big customers, but still the majority of our sales, the majority of the people that we, who buy our product buy one reformer at a time. So every reformer that's purchased is a big deal for us. Um, and that's really important to us. It's always been that way, and it's always gonna be that way, that our business, our business is dependent on single sales, one reformer at a time to one customer like you guys.